Thanks everybody for joining today. I'm just going to do a quick run through of the agenda, cover what we'll go over today, and then uh, hand it over to David. So we're going to start by doing a quick overview of OpenDNS, who we are and what makes us different. We'll then jump into some of the problems we're seeing today with security enforcement and threat intelligence sharing. We'll then cover how OpenDNS is providing uh, solutions to tackle this problem. And finally, how to implement those solutions in four simple steps. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to David Yulovich. Thanks, Clay. So uh, again, thanks for everyone who's joining us today. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with OpenDNS, we are a cloud-delivered security service. That means it's easy to use our service across any device anywhere in the world, and we can give you a consistent security uh, visibility and enforcement no matter where you are, where your employees are, your branch offices. It starts by pointing your DNS traffic to us, and then we can do all kinds of cool things across our global network. We can allow sites to go through, we can block sites, we can redirect them to a proxy for a deeper inspection, and really we've built a, a full uh, capability of really providing powerful security uh, that is easy to deploy. And that's one of the things we're known for. And as we talk about the new sort of security stack and how to extend your security, this delivery model for security is a, is a key piece of how, how we're able to make that possible. The product that we sell to businesses is called Umbrella. Uh, we are very, very proud that we have more than 10,000 uh, paying customers uh, in organizations around the world that are using it today. And they're using it from more than 160 different countries. We have invested heavily in building a global network. So we have more than 24 different points of presence around the world. We operate our own infrastructure. So it's our own routers, switches, and servers. We interconnect with more than 500 different ISPs around the world across more than 2,000 peering sessions. This gives us a global vantage point of internet traffic that is a key part of our security uh, research that I'll talk about uh, in just a moment. And we really want to focus, you know, part of this delivery model for security is focused on putting security and performance on equal pedestals. So we really try to deliver a service that while it is dramatically increasing your, your security and your protection and your visibility, doesn't do so at the expense of performance. Uh, at the same time, we know that we're putting our, our neck on the line. We are, a, we are in the line of fire of traffic, and so availability and uptime uh, is of paramount concern. We have a world-class operations and infrastructure team, uh, and for the last seven years, we have uh, been reliably carrying traffic for more than 50 million people uh, today. Today is now more than 50 million daily active users. Uh, and that's a good segue to talking about, uh, just briefly before we go back to talking about that delivery model for security, the other thing that we're known for is our security research. And the reason that our security research is so unique is that it is based off of uh, this global vantage point of internet traffic that we see. So there are more than 50 million daily active users that use OpenDNS and use our enterprise services. Uh, and they come from a demographically diverse cross-section of traffic. It comes from global Fortune 100 enterprises to mom and pop uh, uh, small businesses to families at home to schools. Uh, and from all parts of the world. So we really have the, what we sort of think of as the satellite overview of internet traffic, and we see the patterns of behaviors of good users, of infected users. Uh, we see infrastructure, command and control infrastructure. We see domains being registered, domain name changes, IP routing information, and we store, log, and analyze all that data. And we've turned that into what we call predictive threat intelligence. The technology behind this is called the security graph. And over the last two years, this predictive uh, intelligence that we've built has become has, has earned a reputation for identifying and preventing threats that no other vendors see and blocking threats before they reach our customers' networks. And we really, really have focused on thinking about ways to get out in front of attacks and getting in front of threats. And one of the best ways that uh, we've discovered to do that is by looking at data patterns, looking at traffic, looking at internet metadata, comparing domain registration information, looking, you know, if we see a botnet command and control server, recognizing that, uh, you know, the domain that it points to today might change tomorrow, but that the attackers are using shared infrastructure, or they might be using the same uh, who is information, or they might be using a domain generation algorithm that we can unwrap and, and predict and get out in front of. And the idea is to block and prevent threats before they reach our customers' networks, or if machines are already infected, prevent people from beaconing out to known bad sites. And this is all part of giving them a stronger security posture. So that's, that's our intelligence piece, and I'm going to shift back to the, the focus of the webinar today, which is really about extending the security stack, and it's really about this our, our delivery model for security. So I think before we, before we talk about this, this delivery model for security and why, why people are using OpenDNS and why they're buying our umbrella 
uh, enterprise security services, I think it's important to understand the dramatic changes that as uh, IT administrators, as CIOs, as CISOs, as people that are chartered with protecting your, your corporate assets, as, as we all are, what, what has changed for us? And, the, and I think, you know, we now live in a world where the IT landscape is dramatically different than it has been for the last 35 years. Rather than everybody coming into the office, sitting down at their workstation and accessing a local file server, you now have myriad devices that are often Wi-Fi connected. Some of them might be owned by the employees. They might be connected to the cellular networks. You have people working wherever work needs to get done. So they're sitting outside the office, they're at Starbucks, they're at the airport, they're on the road, they're at home, they're working 24-7. Uh, and, and those two things alone, the myriad devices and the roaming users, wouldn't be such a big deal. But when you pair them up with the third major disruption that's happened to the IT landscape, which is the shift to cloud applications, nobody's really VPN. People are VPNing back into their corporate network much less often because they can now sit at Starbucks using their iPad or their laptop, accessing Salesforce and all these different tools. And from a security standpoint, this means that the attack surface that we need to protect, that, that corporate castle no longer exists in the way that it has existed in the past. You can't just rack and stack an appliance that's going to look at all the traffic coming in and out of your corporate network because all these people that have left the office are, are no longer going to get, you know, you no longer have visibility into the network traffic and you, don't, you no longer have a way to protect them uh, when they're out on the road. And Clay is going to talk a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later on. But fundamentally, it's a, it's a whole new world out there and we think that it's time to really think about new ways of approaching security and, and obviously we believe that delivering it as a service is a fundamental tenant of reestablishing a strong security posture. And without spending too much time to talk about sort of the, those old approaches, the traditional approaches, I did want to take just a second to talk about the, you know, what we see the challenges are with the old perimeter appliance model of sticking a gateway box, you know, a IDS box or some appliance to the edge of your network. While you might have a very strong security posture on your corporate network, all that goes away when people are outside the office and they're sitting at home and they're surfing the web. And even if you have a VPN, and Clay will mention this, this a little bit later, even if you have a VPN, people aren't always on the VPN. And we know that unless traffic is going through an appliance, there's no way for the appliance to actually be effective at blocking things. And that's what we want to try to change. That's what we want to change today, and that's what we're going to talk about. The other thing that we see is that you know malware today has become increasingly sophisticated. Attacks are chained together, so it's not just one component of attack. It's not just a phishing attack. It's you know you get a link in an email that points you to a website that does a flash exploit that infects your machine and then connects to a command and control infrastructure. So the attacks are are, are multi pronged. The attacks themselves, the pieces of malware themselves, are polymorphic. So you can't just have signatures and nightly antivirus updates. And we know that all of these sort of reactive approaches to security are no longer uh, enough to stay ahead and, and, and get in front of advanced threats. So I think this is a, a good segue here to talk about, you know, before I hand it off to Clay, you know, what we really think, you know, as we reimagine the new security stack, and as we reimagine what has worked really well for the last 35 years in enterprise computing, and what's it going to look like going forward, we know that there's benefits of having uh, an intrusion detection device. We know that what the technology that someone like FireEye and Checkpoint do on their sandboxes is really, really important. It's important to be able to look at malware and evaluate the behavior. We know that the next-gen firewall market of doing application identification, that those things are really important. The problem is that those things don't have any ap applicability as soon as your employees leave the corporate network, and they don't talk to each other. And so what we're really uh, excited about at Opening Nest is solving these two problems, breaking down these silos, as well as really extending the strong security posture that you have on your corporate network and extending that out outside the corporate perimeter uh, into a way that is applied everywhere 24-7. And so with that, I will hand it off to Clay to talk more about what we mean. Thanks, David. So as David mentioned, you know, we really believe that customers need help in breaking these silos down. Today, when a threat is detected at the perimeter, it can only be blocked at the perimeter. And the same is true of endpoint protection. There is no easy way to automate this communication or reporting across solutions. The only option is to require all traffic to backhaul to the corporate network. But as we all know, fewer and fewer people are using VPNs or are simply at a branch office or remote location that isn't on the corporate network. All of this adds up to two major problems. The eroding network perimeter creates gaps in protection for roaming devices, and even when those devices are on network, there is no easy way to share data across your existing solutions. This old 9 to 5 model simply doesn't work in today's always-on corporate world. 
Don't get us wrong, though. We think that detecting threats on the corporate network is good, but we truly believe that blocking threats on any device anywhere is simply better. It's time to turn on a 24-7 coverage that extends beyond just corporate assets and covers all employee devices, regardless of their location and day of the week. You know, Gartner recently stated that by 2017, at least 50% of technology providers will use intelligent sharing capabilities between disparate technologies and across different vendors. And we agree. OpenDNS has always tried to stay ahead of the curve when it comes to security. Offering unique solutions to hard problems is our specialty. One example of this is the integration we launched with FireEye earlier this year, which allows our mutual customers to send events their FireEye appliance detects up to our cloud for global enforcement. For instance, consider a large oil and gas company that has myriad locations to protect. With this integration, they can extend their FireEye protection to all locations, oil rigs, offsite workers, etc., with a push of a button. We saw great success with this partnership and realized it was just the beginning. We decided to expand not only the number of integrations, but the very platform they're built upon. So now David's going to walk us through that a little, a little bit more. Great. Thanks, Clay. It's true. Our FireEye partnership really opened up the doors to understanding how we can use our delivery model for security to not just deliver our own security, but to really build a platform for delivering security from a whole variety of sources so that people can take that that really strong sort of you know stack of security solutions they have at the edge of their network and really recreate those, those same bumps in the wire, but recreate them virtually so that instead of protecting you know, your main HQ, you can protect your 10,000 laptops out in the field, you know, your 20,000 iPhones that your employees have all over the world, and really reestablish that security posture. So today, uh, we are announcing that we have turned that first integration we did into a real platform that, that is now able to be extended to other partners. We believe that by offering these APIs, we're going to allow uh, all kinds of security vendors to help you recreate that posture uh, and in a way that provides our protection everywhere, in a way that's easy to enable, easy to integrate, that breaks down those silos. So the first two partners that we're announcing uh, are really, really incredible. It's incredible that we've been able to put together these, uh, these two amazing companies to work with us. And so they are Checkpoint, which is now one of the largest security companies in the world. I believe they claim 500 of the Fortune 500 as customers, as long as thousands and thousands of uh, small and mid-sized enterprises that use their firewalls to protect their, their corporate perimeters. Uh, and we've integrated with their anti-bot technology. We've also integrated with an up-and-coming startup that has really cool technology uh, that analyzes social media uh, to find and identify threats that are being shared across social media. Uh, the same way that maybe an anti-spam appliance would look at email, they're doing the same thing for social media. It's very cool. It's an important part of the security stack to look at. Uh, and we've partnered with both these kinds of companies to enable their intelligence to be extended to our, to our delivery model for security and enforce for our customers. We believe this is the future. It's just the start. We're going to be adding a whole bunch of security partners soon. Uh, and in a moment, I'm going to hand it back to, to Clay, who will walk you through how this actually looks and works on our, our infrastructure. Before I do that, I want to run through just a, a quick example of how this works at a high level. So this is a let's let's go back to that hypothetical example of the oil and gas company. Uh, we have uh, we actually have one that, that is using this today. They're they're a Fortune 200 oil and gas company, uh, and the, you know let's say they have a you know they have a headquarters somewhere in Texas. They have oil rigs that are out in the Gulf of Mexico. They have offices all over North America. They have engineers out in North Dakota working on oil fracking. Uh, they have executives at home that are on the road. They have other people that are constantly traveling on the road, and so. Uh, what you want to have happen is, let's say that at their headquarters, uh, they have different security appliances, So, but they don't have that protection when their employees are leaving the office. So when they want to run a solution like this integration that we've just announced, they will have all their different offices, all their branch offices, all their different devices, and we have all kinds of deployment models for all these different scenarios, point to our global infrastructure. Then, and Clay will walk you through the screenshots of how this actually looks in our, in our UIs and in their UIs in just a moment, then when their appliance in, uh, let's say it's in Dallas, detects a threat, whether it's on a, a FireEye appliance or a checkpoint uh, firewall or, or a bot detection blade, when that particular appliance detects a threat, what ends up happening is it's going to send it up to our cloud in real time. We'll be able to evaluate it, and then we'll be able to blanket the globe. Oops, I went ahead too quickly. We'll be able to blanket the globe with real-time protection from that particular threat 
no matter where the employee is, no matter where the appliance is across all your branch offices. And so this allows you to take that really specialized and proprietary intelligence that that appliance may have discovered by, you know, evaluating a piece of uh, uh, malware or some binary in a sandbox or some specialized feed, whether it comes from ZeroFox or, or, or other partners we'll be announcing later, and in providing real-time enforcement against that threat everywhere in the world. So it really changes that nine to five security model into a 24 seven security posture. So even when your employees are at home, you know, surfing YouTube, browsing the web, they're getting immediate and real time uh, enforcement from the threats that are being detected from the appliances you have back at your headquarters. This is a fundamental shift in the way that people have thought about security before. It's a true integration of multiple best in class vendors, and it allows you to really, uh, I think, you know, not just add value based on your existing investments in your security stack, but really extend that value everywhere in the world so that you have a true 24 seven security posture that's consistently applied everywhere and doesn't just protect people when they're in the office. So I think that, uh, you know, while, while most of you probably believe this and hopefully you believe what we're saying because we try to be fairly pragmatic, uh, you know, the analysts have now really done a bunch of research and 2016, which doesn't, you know, it may, sort of, it may sound far away, but we're about to walk into 2015. So it's really not far away at all. So by 2016, that means walking into 2016, a little over a year from now, 30% of advanced targeted threats will specifically target branch offices as the entry point. They know that corporate networks have established a strong security posture at HQ, so they're going to find other weak points of entry, and they're going to be persistent, and they're going to try every single lock on every single door. And so we know that there has to be a way, without requiring you to deploy hardware appliances to every single office and every single customer, you know, every single employee in your, in your office, there has to be a way to re-establish that strong security posture and extend the intelligence you've built at HQ everywhere. So, and, you know, and one of the ways that I think about this is that one of the great powers of the cloud and cloud, cloud computing isn't just elasticity, but it makes really powerful security solutions that might only be available for you to deploy at your HQ. It makes them, when you, when you can deploy them as a service, and it makes them available everywhere. So you can deploy them on an individual phone that's out on the road and at home, whether your CEO is traveling or to a branch office that's in the middle of the jungle in Africa. You can get the same powerful protection of the big iron at HQ, but delivered as a service everywhere. And that, to me, is, is one of the coolest things about a cloud-delivered security service. So now, with that out of the way, Clay is going to walk us through what it actually looks like. Thanks, David. So as I said earlier, there's four simple steps to do this, so we'll walk through them quickly here. Uh, and step one is basically within the umbrella dashboard. You want to enable the integration. Um, it's as simple as turning it on. And this is going to generate a unique URL and token that's specific to your account and the solution you're connecting. Then for step two, you'll take that same unique token and following our simple instructions, configure whichever solution you have in place to start sending events to us. Whether it's Checkpoint, ZeroFox, or FireEye, each can be completed with a few simple clicks. We leverage existing APIs and device notifications layers to make this as easy as possible for you. Um, for the third step, I'll take you back into the Umbrella dashboard, and this is where you'll configure your policies for each integration. It's important to note that by default, we start all integrations out in an audit mode, essentially allowing us to collect events sent by each integration without actually enforcing them. This is to provide peace of mind that the right events are being pushed through and to mitigate any false positives. And then finally, in the fourth step, you know, once you're ready and, and feel that there aren't any false positives coming through, you can set those integrations to be in a blocking mode. And then from there, we'll display granular reporting showing you exactly which solution sent an event to be blocked, what, event, what the event was, who made the request, and what time of day it was. Not only do we, we think this will save you time in determining which devices need cleanup, but also in helping you identify which solutions are providing intelligence. We think this is super straightforward and very simple. And uh, with that, I'd like to pass it over to David for any of his closing thoughts. Thanks, Clay. As you can see from the screenshot in front of you, uh, it is very cool. Uh, I think that it's amazing that we were able to very quickly and in such a turnkey way extend the intelligence and truly best-in-class solutions. We know that any security vendor that says that they block 100% of threats or any vendor that says that they can do everything and be everything to everyone doesn't really end up you know, delivering on that promise. So what we want to make it possible to do is to allow our customers and allow our joint customers to pick 
truly best in class solutions and then integrate them and layer them together in a way that's easy to deploy, that's consistently applied, that's globally available, that's not just at headquarters, but really changes. And you know, I, I know that I've said this now probably 20 times in this webinar, but really changes that nine to five security posture of only have protection, of only having protection when you're in the office or on the VPN and turn that into 24 seven protection so that you don't get infected when you're out on the road or just surfing the web and then bring that infection back to work. We want to have, it's like a seatbelt, right? You want to wear the seatbelt all the time. Uh, and the same thing is true with security. You want to have it applied all the time that you're online and surfing uh, the web. So in conclusion, uh, we think this is really uh, a, a major, major step forward in delivering security for the way the world works today. Hopefully it gives you some visibility and insight into how we think of our place in that security ecosystem as truly delivering a platform for delivering security. Obviously we spend a ton of energy and effort uh, doing our own advanced threat research at a global scale, looking at all that internet traffic and, and metadata to do our predictive threat intelligence. But we know that there's going to be lots of specialists and specialized areas of security that our customers want to integrate, whether it's zero fox on you know, social media threat intelligence or checkpoint uh, on their uh, bot detection capabilities uh, or any of the any other number of many partners that we'll be announcing in the coming uh, weeks and months. Uh, and again, thanks for all your time and looking forward to hearing all your feedback and hopefully you get tremendous uh, use out of this new uh, security stack that we're building. Thanks. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks, yeah. David.